So, I want to talk about how to build iOS apps the Michigan Hackers way. Um, first, one more thing. Um, how many of you guys are in Michigan Hackers or have been to a meeting or anything like that? Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, you guys should definitely come. Uh, Otto or Jack can probably talk to you about that after me. Um, we're super cool. But, so, the Michigan Hackers way of building an iOS app. Um, we're just sort of deciding on what that is right now because a lot of people that I know have gotten started with iOS development. I see them going down a really not so great path. So I really want to um, do a lot of things to help correct that before they develop, the, or before they waste a lot of their time building apps that suck in terms of code. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm Joe, on the junior computer science. Uh, I've been working with iOS since 2009. I've got nine apps on the App Store. Um, there's a huge difference between the code in the first app that, that I wrote and then the code in the app that I most recently wrote. Um, and I think that that's a huge part of what I'm going to be talking about today, is how to make sure you don't write code that is as bad as this first app that I wrote. So, why I'm giving this talk. So that was the reason I'm giving this talk, but the reason that this talk needs to be given is because Apple sucks at writing user-friendly libraries. The stuff that you find built into the iOS SDK, um, UI kit, it's not that bad. Um, you're usually going to be working with things, if you're doing it right, you're usually going to be working with things built on top of UI kit and also working with UI kit a lot of the times. NSURL connection, um, things like that. By the way, I'm just naming things in the SDK right now. Um, these are just the default, this is the default way of working with um, networking. That's no good. You should really never be interfacing with it directly. Um, core data, I despise core data. You should never use core data in your life ever, um, except for maybe very specific reasons. Um, the main problem here is that a lot of times, I'd say the problem usually is that Apple tries their best to cover every single possible use case with the libraries that they create. And what that gives you is libraries that have really weird and unintuitive APIs uh, that make it really hard to do simple things. So these APIs are not fun. This is an example of all the code that you need to just do a simple um, fetch in core data. You just have some objects, and you want to fetch them from a database. Uh, you want to order them by their timestamp. You have to do all this junk, and it's really bad. But writing iOS code is actually tons of fun, way more fun than that slide that I just showed you. So I want to show you why that is the case. We're going to go through building a Reddit app. I'm not going to do it live coded, because from doing these things, I've noticed no one ever really follows along. If you guys would like to look through the code while I'm talking about it, then go to the event page. I've got a link on there to the Git um, repository. Um, if you guys don't know how to clone something in Git, you basically just go into a terminal, type git clone, and then paste in that URL. Then you can go into that folder and you know, follow along. So to build this Reddit app, we're going to need to request JSON. Now, just by the way, I want to make sure you guys stop me at any point if I use something that you're not familiar with, like JSON, I'm guessing a lot of you might not have heard before. That's just short for JavaScript object notation. Um, it's just, if you've heard of XML, it's similar to that, um, but better. It's just a way of representing um, objects uh, in text. So that's what a lot of web servers use, like Reddit, um, to give us information. So we need to grab that from the web. We need to map that JSON to real objects in our um, app. Sorry. Good question. We need to put those objects in a table view, um, which if you have an iPhone, you probably put it in the table. It's a pretty common um, user interface component. And then when that post is tapped on, we need to follow that link um, and open up in a new window. So the old way of doing this, the non-Michigan hackers way, um, it's going to involve 
very few third-party sources. Um, you're mostly going to be making everything yourself. And when you do have them, you're going to drag them into your project and manually install dependencies. Uh, you're going to use core data. You're going to use NSURL connection. And you're going to use UI table views directly. And it's going to take you forever. And you're going to probably use MVC, which is a, a design pattern that stands for model view controller. Or in the case of iOS, it stands for massive view controller, because you end up writing a lot of code in just one file that's really messy. So that's the old way. The Michigan Hackers way involves a lot of nice third-party resources, like Reactive Cocoa and AF Networking. And instead of MVC, we're going to be using model view view model. There's that thing on the right. I'll talk more about that later. But we're going to have, like I said, quite a few third-party libraries that we're going to be using in our um, project. So the way, the de facto way to manage third-party libraries in iOS code is without a doubt CocoaPods. So that's a library for managing your libraries. You, it's basically, if any of you have used RubyGems before, it's basically RubyGems for iOS projects. Um, and it's really, really great. Um, makes you not have to worry about a single thing when it comes to installing dependencies. Um, and it really gives you a sense that Anything out there that's open source, you can just throw in your project with just one line of code. Um, that's really nice. So, CocoaPods is great. I'm cuckoo for CocoaPods. Um, so all you have to do to install stuff using CocoaPods, uh, install stuff into your project, which is different from installing it on a computer, um, it just sort of drags the code into a separate directory so you don't have to worry about it. You just create a pod file, which I'll go over in a second, and then from the command line, you run the pod install, and then you never have to worry about dependencies ever again. So a pod file looks like this. This is the one that we're going to be using for that. So it's actually Ruby code, which is nice. You're just calling it Ruby functions, um, which is great. It's really robust. It allows you to do a lot of different things. Right here is a really simple one. We just have our platform, iOS, two options would be iOS and OS X, um, or universal. And then we do our you know, iOS version 7.0. And then we specify our pods that we're going to be using. So a pod is just um, any third party library that has what's called a pod spec that allows you to use it using Google Pods. So there's a huge, huge environment. Um, for all of these things, like everyone just uploads a bunch of stuff. There's a crazy amount of different files you can download that just make your life easier when it comes to making iOS apps. So you can do things like write a decent Reddit app in 100 lines of code. So I'm going to talk a second about a design pattern that the, the design pattern that we're going to use in this app. You might. If you're an iOS programmer, normally the first thing you gravitate to is MVC, which is like I said, model view controller. Um, and I'm going to define that now. It just means you have three different types of classes that you're going to be using in your project. There's a model, which basically handles data and um, saving things to your database, um, the different attributes that you're going to have in your model objects, like. For example, in our Reddit app, uh, we have post object. That's the only object we have. But it has a few attributes like URL, <coughs> thumbnail, image, title. Um, so that's your model. Then view, obviously, just the user interface that in iOS it includes, um, if you messed around with Xcode, you know what this means. Um, it includes interface builder files, storyboards, um, and UI view subclasses. So UI view being just the standard view that everything inherits from if you want it to be visible on the screen. And then the last thing is controllers, which is just sort of something that sits in between the two and coordinates everything. But you'll notice that's a pretty vague description of the controller. That's one of the main problems with it. Um, so you end up having a lot of code in your um, view controller. 
it's pretty messy. The whole point of design pattern is to keep things clean. So um, what we want to do instead is make things more concrete. Another problem that we have is, and actually this is the main problem I'd say for iOS, is when you make a new view, like you just go to Xcode, you click new, and you make a new view controller, it creates an interface builder file for you by default, which is classified as a view, and then it creates a view controller, which is a controller. And they sort of get created for you together, and they come up together and they're pretty much inextricably connected, so you really don't want to be trying to separate them. So that's why um, instead, we're looking at model view view model, which view model are the same thing. The main difference is view model uh, is the thing that sits in the middle, and it's got a more concrete definition, um, whereas view controllers are actually just lumped in with views, sort of where they belong, because you'll notice if you do any iOS programming that most of the time your view controllers end up managing the view, just doing view type stuff. So that's what we're doing. So finally, um, we're going to do some code now. I'll stop and see if I have any questions. People usually don't like to raise their hands, so raise your hand if you understand stuff that I said so far. Raise your hand if you're with me. Okay. What am I? I've noticed the difference in people who are with me to ask questions. Um, anyone want to tell me anything that's unclear? Um, so, fortunately, a lot of you guys not much experience with iOS, so I'm going to go through a quick crash course in Objective C, which is obviously the main language that you're going to be working with. Almost the only language uh, that you're going to be working with on iOS. So, it's a lot like C++. If like C++, it's an object-oriented layer sort of built on top of C. Um, it just has a few differences in how it accomplishes that object-oriented style. So you've got functions like C and C++, but instead of functions, they're usually uh, messages. This can be kind of confusing, but really, if you look at it and you think about it, they're sort of the same thing. They just have a different syntax. Underneath the, um, underneath the hood, they run a little differently, but you don't really need to concern yourself with that most of the time. It's just a different syntax. Um, they get longer, so you might have something like set title for state. Um, they get much longer than that, but I can't fit on a slide. It's too long. So the thing to just recognize is this green part right here, all the green, is the name of the method or function. Same. I think they just method function in the same thing. Um, they just have named parameters, basically. So title and state are named, um, which is one of the nice aspects of the syntax, is you get to name every single parameter. So you can just sort of look at um, a message or a method declaration and get a really good sense of what you want to pass in. Whereas um, C C++, Java, you might have to read a lot of documentation before you get that. And then also, um, messages get nested, so you've got something like this here where um, there's this object alloc right here. That This alloc in it is something you see a lot, and it's not very intuitive, um, it's kind of annoying, but basically you're just allocating space and then initializing that space. Um, you, do, you get to start doing it so often that you don't even notice, um, you don't even think about what it means, but basically you're allocating the space, returning that, and then on that space that you're trying to get calling it. So it's a nested function. And those can get pretty deep, but you want to try and avoid nesting things too much. So another thing about Objective-C, at symbols are everywhere. Um, if you see something that has an at in front of it, that usually means that that's something that's specific to Objective-C. Um, and it means that that's sort of the way that Objective-C differentiates from C because it actually has a nice feature that you can run, you can write C and Objective-C in the same line. So 
This also illustrates our three main data structures that we have. Um, the ones that you're working with most often. And as string, you just have regular string with an add front of it. As in this case with this other two, an array, you just have comma separated values. And then as dictionary, uh, it's like an order map, hash table, and it's just a key value. So for defining classes, um, this is something like the class keyword in Java C++. Um, it separates, specifically separates the interface from the implementation. So what that means is in the interface up here, um, you decide the names, or you list the names of your functions. Um, the types that they take, the types they return, things like that. That's your public interface. That's what how other objects are going to talk to the object that you make. Implementation, where you actually implement those functions. And classes have properties. Don't worry about the stuff that goes in between the parentheses. Uh, you'll see stuff like strong, non-atomic, retain. You really, when you're starting out, you really don't need to worry about what those mean. Um, most of the time, they're not important. You can just copy and uh, stack a little flow or something. Um, and properties are just like instance variables that are public. You just access them with dot syntax. So like new object dot string would be that string. And another thing, all objects are pointers. Uh, if you guys are sophomores, that means you're probably still terrified of pointers. Um, but actually, the nice thing about it is, since everything is a pointer, it sort of feels like nothing is a pointer, so you don't really have to worry about it. Um, because you just sort of get into the habit of um, working with these objects as if they were actual objects. And also, the message syntax really helps with not having to worry about that, because you don't find yourself using that arrow thing or the star or anything like that. You just declare things and use them in the, in the messages. ID is another thing you might see um, every once in a while. That's really the only special type. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It just means it could be anything. It's like auto in C++. Not that auto. So back to the list of things we need to do. Um, actually, I want to stop again for questions. If anyone has any questions at all. No. So first thing we need to do is request JSON from reddit.com. Um, Reddit API is really nice uh, in that we really just have to query a URL and get back what we want. So we don't have to pass any parameters at all. Any like, extra. I don't know about what file should we be looking at right now? Oh, right now, uh, we're not into the code just yet. Okay. I think two or three slides will be. And I'll pop out of uh, the slide presentation going to Xcode and then I'll show you. Oh yeah, later. So the first thing we first thing we do, like I said, request JSON, but it's API is really nice. Um, makes it pretty easy. So the old way of doing this would look something like this. You're gonna want to have that a string, the URL, make it as URL, um, and as mutable URL request. You have such a cache policy, you have your timeout interval, you can actually press such a delegate, and you have your delegate methods, and then you get some data, and you get the JSON down here, and you parse that in JSON. Uh, it's going to turn it into a dictionary, and you think that's horrible, so you should never have to do that, ever. Um, there's this great library, probably the most popular third party library out there for iOS. Um, if there's one thing you take away from this, it's that you should use CocoaPods. And if there are two things that you should take away from this talk, it's you, that you should use CocoaPods and AF Networking. So AF Networking makes it super easy to get that Reddit feed that we wanted to grab. Um, we just have a manager. Manager is something we um, declared elsewhere. Um, if you're following along in the code, that's RB API Manager. Um, I'll show that in a second. And we, all we have to do for that is specify a base URL, so reddit.com. Um, that's the only magic that's happening here. Other than that, this is the exact call that we would make. You'll notice it's pretty robust. You can pass in 
any parameters at all, and they'll just magically work. Um, this is a lot better than the NSURL version, where you actually have to do some string parsing nonsense and put the parameters into the URL string directly. Um, which is no good. So we've got um, this, you know, this success thing here. We handle the success. Failure we handle here. Um, Got, this is all just one function, and you might be getting confused by um, this thing that we've got in the middle there. Uh, that's called a block. That's something that I didn't mention yet. It's something in Objective-C. It's pretty new. But basically, all you need to know about it, if you know JavaScript, then this kind of thing is sort of familiar. Um, it's a function declared in line that's passed around like a variable. So, the idea of what we're doing here is we want to do this asynchronously. So if you don't know what that means, we want to um, shoot off the request. And we don't want to sit around waiting for the response and freeze up the UI. We want to wait for it to come back. Well, we want to just let it come back and then be notified when it comes back. So we pass this um, success handler, uh, I guess, and it'll run that code. So don't worry about the syntax. Nobody ever remembers the syntax. So is there just a something like an anonymous function which receives two parameters? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, you can't actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like a lambda expression there. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, you can name them if you want. Uh, you can do a type def, or you can have variables that are blocks. Um, there's a lot of different options, which is why there's a lot of different syntax, which is why it really helps to have a reference for that syntax. And so if you're confused, you're like, I need to have a block in my code, but I don't know how to do that, then fucking blocksyntax.com <laughs> is really great for that. Um, if you guys, I don't want to get out of the presentation for that, but if you guys go to your computers that you want to look and you can see, it's a really great reference. Um, no kidding, it's really fantastic for when you forget how to do blocks and you need to remember. Um, besides stupid syntax, they're really powerful, um, really useful, and you can see them a lot if you're doing any modern iOS program. So back to our get request, hopefully you have a little better understanding of what's going on. Everything starting from that carrot down to starting from this carrot down to this brace here um, is the failure block. Everything from this carrot to here is the success block. So there's variables. We're just passing them in, and they're going to get called later with these um, arguments. So we're going to handle it somehow. And if you're in the code, you can see it. So I think now I'm going to pop out of here and show you some. A lot of you guys probably aren't familiar with, well, who's used Xcode before? Um, oh, all right. So, like I said, we've got our, I just realized I haven't really introduced the project yet, um, so let me take a second to do that. We've got a couple classes here. Um, most of these classes really just have a couple lines in them. I think. That's better for the most part than having one class that has a bunch of junk in it. Um, so each class has a pretty specific purpose. Um, you'll see on the top there, master view controller. Um, master view, it doesn't really need to be called master because there's only one view really. Um, but it's just the view controller. Um, that handles all the view stuff. Like I said, the view controller is lumped in with the view. So it just handles the view stuff. Loading things in the table view. Um, things like that. Um, we have master view model. What that's actually going to do is be the one that's asking reddit.com for its um, feed. We have a custom cell that I made. Um, it's just an image and title. Uh, cell item, that's like two lines. Don't really worry about that. That's just the thing that goes in the cell. Um, RB post, that's the model object that I described earlier. And API manager, and once again, that's just um, like a Three line class. Um, it's really just to specify the base URL and allow us to use AF networking to um, talk to Reddit in a really easy way. 
So I'm going to hop on over to the view model for the AF going on. And like I showed you before, we've got this AF request operation. Um, see that signal thing there? Uh, don't worry about that right now. Um, just worry about we're getting hot.json. Hot is like Reddit has multiple ways of ordering things. Hot, top, controversial. Um, so we're getting the, the default one. Um, no parameters. And then once we return that, we're going to send it off to somewhere. Um, signal. I haven't defined that yet, but it's pretty cool. And then if it fails, we'll send an error on the signal. I don't think I actually handled that. Anymore. Um, you should in real life. But it's fine. So all the other stuff I'm going to get into later, but that's a good example of how simple it can be to do a request to an API compared to something like an SQL connection. The API manager, if you guys were curious, this is all it is. Basically, what I always read dot com. So next thing we need to do, map the JSON to real objects. That's our post object that we defined before. Um, if you're in the code, that's already post. Um, so the object is pretty simple. Like I said, we've got the interface here. Um, that's just declaring all the things that other classes have to interface with our object. And we got three properties. Pretty simple, sort of test Reddit app, so nothing too crazy. We've got a title. We've got two URLs, a thumbnail, and then just the URL for the post. We're going to need the thumbnail URL to load the URL itself. And the title of the URL is pretty obvious. We're using URL to load um, the post once we want it. So the old way of doing that, uh, something like this, we want to map this dictionary that we have, this um, you know text that uh, we're given from Reddit. We want to map that to our object that we have. This isn't an actual example, but it's something like what we would be doing um, if we didn't know that third-party things existed. So it's just going through the dictionary and assigning things one by one. You can see it would get pretty tedious um, if you have a huge object uh, with like 20 or 30 properties, which happens. Yeah. So, that. Um, so shameless plug, uh, I have a third-party um, CocoaPod that's out there. Um, called JC model stands for my name. Everyone in iOS third-party programming is very humble, and the the two letters at the beginning of uh, classes usually refer to that person's initials. Um, fun little fact for you. So this is one that I have. You can just do pod JC model uh, if you want to try it, and that'll allow you to use it. So it just allows that conversion in one line. Uh, update with JSON. I actually changed the API recently, so it's updated the dictionary, but um, what it does is it goes into your class, um, looks at the, the names of your um, your properties, and then automatically assigns um, the JSON to the object. If the names aren't the same, then you can specify them with um, a dictionary, a PLS, a mapping, things like that. So that's that. Oh, so let me show you what that looks like. In code, if you guys aren't following along, so that stuff is happening in the view model again. Um, it's actually just this right here. This is the only line that we need. Um, so if you look, actually, this would be useful. Let me just um, pull some, something up real quick. the JSON view we're actually getting. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, the whole uh, root keypad thing that you saw in there, that's just saying when we get to the actual post that we want, 
Um, the path that we need to take to get there is data, children, data. That's all that is. Um, just allows you to map that kind of stuff really, uh, really easily without having to, you know, do much else. So set response serializer. That's something that's in AMP networking. Um, it's basically just going to be saying once you get um, the JSON response, use this class to serialize it. So um, it's just a special thing that um, automatically happens. So that's what that looks like. So uh, now we need to put the objects in a table view. Um, yeah, it says, if you look at the tutorial, it's going to look something like this. Now, the last two things, um, using some sort of uh, library for mapping JSON, that's very common. AF networking is super popular. Both those things are something that you'll probably find in a tutorial online. But I think that, in general, you should try and go a little deeper and use third-party resources to make your life easier in places where you wouldn't usually um, expect to. So something like this, where you have a whole bunch of code that basically just add some objects to a table view, you get the sense that it really should be easier than this. And there's a really great third-party library out there called RE Table View Manager that makes it really easy to just add some objects to a table view. Um, and it's, it's about as easy as it should be rather than all that junk thing before. Like I said, Apple tries to handle every possible use case, so it leads for some APIs that are hard to work with. So this is much better. So what we're eventually going to want to do is add some posts to our table view. Um, so it's really going to be as simple as add items from array or add item. You know, there's a bunch of different methods. And these are all things that you can look up documentation for online um, if you're ever confused about how to do something. So, this code is dealing with the view, so it's going in our view controller. So I'm going to show you guys that. Okay, look. Here. It's a little more complicated than the example I just showed, um, just to make it, um, that one was just to make it easier to understand the basic idea. But um, we have a custom cell, so we specify that in this bit right here. Um, this right here is the name of our cell item. That's the name of the cell class, right here. We created a section. Table views have like a two-level structure. You've got sections and you've got rows. So to put in rows, first we have to make a section, so we throw in a section, just the one section. And then we have all this junk subscribe next um, that I'm going to explain right now. That's something, um, it's from something called Reactive Cocoa, which is really, really cool. It's a way of doing what's called functional reactive programming on iOS. So the idea of functional programming um, is to minimize state and make it so that every, every function doesn't have side effects and it just returns um, values. So it's just an in-app type thing, more mathematical. Um, but reactive cocoa is less about the functional part, more about the reactive part. The idea is you have all these signals that you want to just have a predefined way to react to. And every time something gets sent on that signal, you'll react to it. So you can have things like, like in an app that I made pretty recently, I have, it's like a stock view, you know, tickers and things like that. So you have uh, constant updates coming in when the prices change because the market's always changing. So once you get one of those, you just send the new value on a signal and you have a, an object that subscribes to that signal and then it knows when it gets something on that signal, it'll update the UI. So uh, it's extremely powerful. I really don't have enough time to talk about um, much as far as Reactive Cocoa deserves its own tech talk. Um, but what we'll be using it for is 
pretty simple. Just this paradigm where we have in the view, um, we've got a back and forth sort of with the view and the view model. The view is going to tell the view model, I want you to grab some posts for me. Um, and it's going to say, I'm subscribing to this signal. And when you create, when you get those posts, I want you to send them back on that signal. And the view model just has to do its get if networking. Um, just like before, and then it just has to call send next posts. It's going to send the posts that it gets on that signal. So I'm going to go back to the code real quick. I'll show you what that looks like. The subscribe dealio is right here. Uh, it's a little, blocks are a little messy, um, but the idea is pretty simple subscribing to it and then we're looping through all the posts, creating a new item for each post. Um, selection handler, don't worry about that yet. I should try to count it out for now. Um, and we just add the item to the section. So create the item, add to the section, and at the very end we reload the table view. So this is the size selection. So you can see what this looks like right now. Not the prettiest thing in the world because um, I was pretty lazy uh, making it. But the basic idea is still there. It just runs to Reddit, grabs that JSON feed, comes back, puts it in the view. Um, pretty simple. The cell stuff, none of that's complicated. I can show it to you because I think you can show it to you. Um, it's just uh, three little lines right here. Get the title, set the image. This is something really cool, set image with URL. That's not actually built in, that's um, AF networking, an AF networking extension. Um, don't worry about that too much, but just know that if you ever are in a situation where you need to show images from the web, you definitely should be using that. It takes something really complicated and puts it on online because um, if you have like a table view, it just it starts loading as soon as the table view cell is visible. And then it'll just pop up when it's done. And you can set a placeholder and things like that. So that's the basic idea. We've just got one more, one more thing we want to do. And that's following the post is tapped. So um, you might be noticing a trend here that rather than solving things the way that you might be in X281, where you just try and help with solution on your own. I really, really recommend doing things the lazy way. And it's going online um, to this great site, um, pillowcontrols.com. There are almost 2,000, probably 2,000 by now, um, different open source uh, commercial components that you can put in your app. It's really, once you get the hang of it, it becomes really cool because you just get the sense that you can go through and look and find stuff that looks cool and just throw it in your app with a couple lines. Um, it really opens up uh, the possibilities for the kind of thing you can do with iOS apps. And when people tell me that they have never used CocoaBots before, um, I just feel like they're missing out on a huge part of uh, what makes iOS development so cool. So stop reading the wheel. Someone has already solved your problem. So the problem we have, we want to take a URL and then load into a view and slide it on. And that's something that if you want to do yourself, it wouldn't be too complicated, maybe like 30, 40 lines, but uh, just let someone else solve the problem for you. So the last um, control that we're using is PD Web View Controller. Um, I just, this isn't even something I've used before, I just Googled it and found it yesterday, um, but it's really cool. You just create the browser, set the URL, and push it onto the navigation stack. Navigation controller, by the way, um, if you're using an iOS app and you have like a bunch of views sliding out with the bar up top, that's run by navigation controller. Um, it's just a push and pop kind of view. So we're done. We've got this cool Reddit app. I didn't click before, but click. Loads the, you know, loads the stuff. You can see a guy in pegging costumes trying to cross the road. Pretty funny. And, uh, I 
Kevin Steen, Canada's <laughs> doing some stuff, you know, things like that. So the, the other cool thing about this is it's really easily extendable. So we've got this nice design pattern that we implemented. Um, so say we want to make it infinite scrolling, so that when you scroll to the bottom, it just loads a new page. Well, the signal type thing might have seemed overcomplicated before, but you realize that it's actually really great for that sort of thing. So if we have a new page of posts that we want to get, we just send them along that signal. They get added to the, um, the table view with the, this method right here. And you don't have to worry about anything else. It'll just happen. This, by the way, I have to show you. Um, this is the part that handles the PD link. It was on the slide, but the only extra thing is we got item dot selection handler. This is another block that we're setting. Um, we had a success handler before, a failure handler, now a selection handler. It handles what happens when you tap on the cell. So what we want to happen is we load the URL of that post and push it on the stack. So that's um, that's our Reddit. Before I stop, I want to really give you a sense of the kind of stuff that's out there. So here's the other pods that I really like. Uh, Objective Sugar is a great one. Uh, it makes Avengers a lot more like movie. Um, if you guys do read, I mentioned it a couple times. It's really intuitive. Um, you can have syntax like that instead of having forms. You just have cards each, and then each card does that. You have some of that times, and so like do something one time or ten times. Split and join, which are things out there strings. Just have a whole mess of stuff that will make your life a lot easier. Fantastic icons uh, is great. A lot of people, I think, when they're doing design, they don't, uh, they just go straight for images. And for something as simple as an icon, I really think that's a mistake. Because if you use an iconic font, you have automatic scaling. You can change the color. Um, a lot of other transformations, you can rotate it. Um, one of my apps, I have a rotate gear thing. Um, really, the options are a lot better. You don't have like, pixelation to make huge. It just scales to the spectrum. Um, and Contest Icon is a collection of three different icon sets. Um, one of them is Font Awesome, Bootstrap. Uh, we web shitload of sites use Bootstrap. So it's a very popular font set, or icon set. And two others are really great. I use this all the time. Frame accessor. Um, most of you guys haven't done iOS. You don't realize um, how much of a pain this part down here is. But for some reason, um, Apple decided it would be a good idea that whenever we want to change, uh, like just an X value, on the coordinates of the view, we have to do this jump, we have to set it, change it, and then set it back. So frame access here just allows us to do that thing at the top. That's a lot easier. FMDB is um, the last one that I'm talking about. And I think it's the most powerful. Um, if you ever need to save objects to um, the hard drive on your device and then query them later, um, you are going to be using SQLite whether that's the core data, which I don't recommend once again, or um, directly with SQLite or with something like FMDB, that's what we're going to use. FMDB is great because it's thread safe, which um, if you guys know what that means, it's just concurrent programming, like different stuff happening at the same time. You want to make sure that stuff doesn't go horribly wrong because it's really easy for that to happen. Um, you'll learn that when you take Geeks 482. That Things go bad really quickly, so it really sucks that core data is not thread safe. So it's one of the reasons I don't recommend using it. And instead, FMDB is really great because you just have a serial queue of database transactions, and you'll never have to worry about getting it and fucked up on the device. So that's the end of my talk. Once again, if you take only one thing away from this talk, is that if you do iOS development, and you have a particular problem you're trying to solve, check uh, the third party use cases first. It'll probably make your life a lot easier. Um, CodeControls.com is that site that I brought up before. Super helpful for that. Um, and CocoaPods is what you're going to be using to 
and all that. So that's it for me. Thanks for coming, guys. Um, let me know if you have any questions. And sorry for being here. Joe, where will these slides be if someone wants to come look at them later? Um, well, I, I'm putting them on GitHub. Yeah, I'm putting them on GitHub. I wasn't sure if that's the answer. So, we're, Mission Hackers now has something called the Knowledge Base, which is the Git repo with links to all the other Git repos. So, if ever you want to learn something, uh, go to the Knowledge Base. Yeah, if you're in the group. We'll put them on. Yeah. yeah, if you're not in the group, Mission Hackers group, you should be in the group. You can just join. Yeah. Um, we're awesome. Is anyone not in the Mission Hackers Facebook group, Facebook group? You should join it if you want to follow along with like other talks and stuff that are coming. Did you guys see posters? Sorry. Um, okay. Well, anyway, we didn't have any posters. I don't know how. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't put a poster. <laughs> I made the poster. Either way, uh, join the Mission Hackers Facebook group to keep in touch with what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so what code handles the tiling aspect of the view? Tiling aspect. So like the So when you like the different posts. Yeah, the actual the view way. aspect of it. So oh, it's not even, uh, you are talking about just the, the fact that it's a table. Yeah. Yeah, that's just UI table view is built in UI kit. Um, that's in the iOS SDK. Um, you're gonna be working with that no matter what. The only thing that I was uh, that I wanted to show you is the code to work with that uh, is really complicated if you don't use um, third party stuff. So our table view manager um, was a great uh, way to do that in a simple way. So yeah, the tiling aspects are built in. It's just a question of how you interface with that code, okay. making it life easier. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Cool. Well, uh, like Otto said, slides be on GitHub, the code's on GitHub, um, everything's on GitHub, and join the Mission Hackers group, and you guys should come to our Hack Nights on Thursday. We're going to have a talk in two days about design. You're doing that too, right? I'm, yeah, I'm talking, Otto's talking, and our friend Molly is talking. Really cool. um, yeah, the talk on Thursday night is going to be about uh, mobile design, general design principles, which is I guess paper design, what we call that, which is general design. And then I'm going to give a talk on web design. So we're going to have like a design for newbies kind of a kind of a talk. Right. You're going to talk about interface builder. Yeah, we're talking about. I didn't touch on interface builder much, but we're talking about that on Thursday. Um, and just sort of general design. There's well, some stuff on how to do uh, design code, like animations. Um, those are really nice in iOS. Uh, so yeah, you guys should come. Um, given the code that you uh, gave us on GitHub, how would you think a newbie should kind of interact with it to get, get as much out of iOS? Yeah, sure. That's a good question. So, um, I would encourage just taking something that you think is wrong with it and trying to fix it. So, one of the things that I was doing earlier was I wanted to get it so if there's no thumbnail, um, then it would slide the text over so it would just do like this, like it's loading images or something. Um, so you might try that, you know. You, you could use frame accessor for that because you're dealing with coordinates. Um, and you're also going to want to look at the Reddit API to see what does it return when it doesn't have a thumbnail. It turns out it returns an empty screen, so you want to handle that. Um, yeah, another thing you might try, uh, if you want to get, get it to refresh when I pull down here, I have a pretty cool uh, meme. Uh, Another machine hacker, Ben Ostelay, made this cool um, Pong refresh control that you pull down and play the game of Pong while it's loading. I'm going to put that in there. That's on Google Lines too. Just a couple lines. You can throw that guy in there. That's the kind of thing that I would say is a more fun way to learn uh, your way around iOS. After that, you can get more complicated stuff, but that'll, that'll help you get a sense for um, the sort of things you can do. And not everything that you do uh, on iOS is going to involve third-party stuff. Like the caveat to that is the smaller libraries tend to have problems with them. So it's something that you probably want to either only do on projects for fun or be ready to fork the project on GitHub, um, have your own version of it, and fix it. Um, but yeah, in general, I think it's a good strategy to have. I mean, the that that I've I'm doing for 
this company that I work for. Um, the pod file for that is huge. It's I think like uh, 20 or 30 different open source controls that I'm using. So yeah, that's all of it. I mean, open up the syntax file. So this is just a lot of different stuff that I think that I use in the app. Core plot is great for doing graphs. Um, some of these, uh, you see the paths down there, that's because like some of them are pods that I've worked on, um, so I have my own local copy. And some of them are just pods that were broken and I needed to do a fix for. Um, so I just have my own local version of them. So CocoaPods is really robust in that if you have a problem like that, you can uh, fix it without too much trouble. So yeah. Um, yeah. Alright, cool. Thanks for coming guys. <laughs>